If your pain hurts and it hurts real bad, or if you have feelings that are making you sad, then it's okay, it's okay to cry. The 1980s was a fantastic decade to be a kid in America. You had everything offered to you. Everything catered and marketed directly at you. You had toys, real toys you could go outside and play with. Toy guns that actually shot pellets and discs, put out each other's eyes. Nobody gave a shit. That's what part of being a kid was about, was getting injured and looking like an idiot because you let somebody shoot you in the eye with a BB. There were cartoons you could sit down on a Saturday morning and watch five to six hours of cartoons straight. You could watch He-Man and G.I. Joe, the Transformers and Ghostbusters and a whole host of other shows. Video games were just starting to come up. You had Nintendo and Sega and Turbo Graphics. There were all sorts of games that were coming out. It was a great time to be young. Now, during that time, there was a, a show that was marketed towards a specific demographic. Now, that demographic was your little sister. Maybe you were switching to go watch a new show on a Saturday morning and you might stumble across it. It was My Little Pony. Now, My Little Pony, like Strawberry Shortcake and all those other kinds of shows, were the sorts of things that you might see on occasion or you might skip over, or maybe, again, if your friend's little sister had control of the television, you'd watch a few minutes of. But it wasn't something you really focused on, at least not if you were a boy. Yeah, they had toys, and they had the show, and there were a few movies that came out, but it had its run. And eventually that run, like the run of the majority of shows that were out at that time, came to an end. But the story doesn't stop there. No, you need to fast forward to 2010, when Hasbro decided, you know what, let's go into the well. Let's do what the majority of studios, be they uh, television or movies or cartoons, let's, uh, let's dig into that well of past intellectual properties and pull something out and see if we can capitalize on nostalgia. Now, their original marketing gimmick, I'm sure, was to target the show at young girls, to hope that uh, the same audience would be brought in, that the mothers now who had kids would remember the show from their childhood and be like, oh, this is great. I remember this, my kid's gonna like this. And so what could go wrong? I mean, this sounds like a brilliant idea. They'll take an old show, they'll retool it, they'll remarket it, they'll reach a new generation of girls aged 2 to 11 who will, most importantly, buy the merchandising. They'll buy the toys, they'll buy the posters and the books and the movies and the DVDs and everything that Hasbro could possibly sell to them. Hasbro's going to make a shitload of money. Only, that's not what happened. Instead, enter the brony. You see, instead of little girls, actually adopting the show. Now, to be fair, there are a lot of young girls that watch the show. If you look at some of the conventions and some of the talks that the creators have given, you'll see a lot of little kids there. But the majority of viewership, the people that actually seem to be driving the show's success, are adult males. How the fuck did that happen? Now, if this were He-Man or G.I. Joe or the Transformers, if this was something that had a nostalgic pull to it, it might be understandable. You might be able to say, well, they watched it when they were kids, and that's why they're kind of attracted to it. But how many of these bronies do you actually think were children and watched the show? Chances are, they were watching something completely different. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. What is a brony? You could ask Google, and they'll give you their description of what a brony is. Well, if you've used the internet for the last four years, chances are you know what a brony is because you've encountered one, or the content they post, whether it's an image macro or anything else. It was fucking everywhere. If you were on 4chan, you specifically know exactly what I'm fucking talking about. You could not avoid it. It was on every board. It was everywhere in every thread. So much so that they actually ended up creating a board specifically for them. Moot made MLP in response to the amount of fucking traffic and the complaints of other users. And this wasn't just on 4chan. Other sites have encountered the same thing. So brony dumb, if you want to call it that, is massive. Massive. It's fucking enormous. You have this huge demographic of adult males that are attracted to this show for whatever the reason is and are fucking dedicated to it and want to talk about it and infuse it in everything. So what is a brony? I mean, when you think about it, after you've encountered it, what really comes to mind? I, I'm fairly certain most people, when they think brony, think something like this. So anyway, there we go. Here we, go. <clears throat> we know about everyone here and how great the show is, right? However, as most of us are aware, there's a darker side to the fandom, which we know pretty well. To this is Oliver and Miss Lippin. Great. All right, so I'm pretty sure you're aware of Princess Celestia being portrayed as a tyrant, an irrenatural, and God forbid, a molester. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 
a socially awkward person, somebody with maybe autism. If you went on YouTube, you're going to find a myriad of channels dedicated to autistic bronies. And I'm not kidding, there are multiple channels from My Little Spaghetti onwards that have tons of videos related to cringeworthy MLP related bronydom. Simply put, another way to look at it, bronies are today what furries were yesterday. Now, over the last, I'd say, year to year and a half, uh, this has sort of cooled off a bit. Uh, bronies have eased up on shoving this shit down everybody's throat, but the impression has still been left. Most people don't like them. They're awkward, and let's be honest here, and I think most bronies are going to freely admit this, their phantom attracts autism like flies on shit. There's no way to ignore that or deny it. There are too many videos, too many encounters with bronies, to be able to just brush that off and say, that's not true. But again, it has cooled off. It is, it is declined. You can go onto other boards now and other websites, and you're not going to encounter it all the time. It seems like bronies are content hanging out and doing their own shit. Again, that's really what annoyed the most people, was they just didn't want to deal with it. Uh, myself, for instance, I have no interest in watching a show about horses, or unicorns, or fucking pegasi, or pegasus, whatever. It, it holds no appeal to me. So I don't want to encounter it when I'm in a thread talking about Ben Garrison's latest racial riot, okay, or his newest murder spree. Right. I, I don't want it to be a part of that. It doesn't fit, it doesn't belong, and so it makes sense not to have it in there. So you have all these bronies, right? And they're starting to kind of congregate, and they're not shoving that shit down everybody's face. And for the majority, for the most of the internet, that's a good thing. Everybody seems happy. Great. They're not going to fuck with us. Good. Let them go do their own thing. Now, a fandom is like any other fandom. You've got different people, content creators. Some people are good at making image macros. Some people make songs. Some write fan fiction, which, yeah, that's, uh, that's a whole other fucking world of crazy, really, let's be honest. I think my favorite fan fiction so far that I've encountered while making this video and looking into all this stupid shit would be the one where the pony gets fucked by a tree stump. That's, that's Shakespearean. That was really well done, whoever wrote that. That was it's fucking A-plus stuff. That's good. It's good shit. So you've got all these content creators. They're making all this sort of stuff. Well, one of them gets an idea. I'm going to create a blog. I'm going to make a Tumblr about a fictitious character in this universe. And there's going to be a gimmick. It's going to be a comedy. All right? It's going to be satire. It's going to be funny. People are going to enjoy it. I'm going to call it Princess Molestasia. And this is the first page that greets you when you show up on this Tumblr. In fact, on the right-hand side, you'll see there's an introductory blurb to greet new users. So let's take a look at that. Let's see what the blog has to say. Some call me Molestasia. Others call me Molly. I like to call myself Big Sexy. I shall allow some of my precious time to answer some peasant questions each week. Worship my ass or be sent to the moon. And if you're really bored, you can also ask my nerdy gaming sister Luna some questions. For mature audiences only. If you take this site seriously, you really do belong on the moon. Well, it seems pretty cut and dry to me. It seems like the blog is directly telling you this is meant for older people. This isn't meant for children with the mature audiences only. And it's also telling you to back the fuck up and have a sense of humor. So what exactly is Molestasia all about? How does it work? Well, it's a fictitious character in the MLP universe, a princess. And the gimmick, if you can't tell already, maybe you're brain dead, is Molestasia likes to molest the other characters. So people will write in and ask a question. And you can take a look, here are some of the, the posts going all the way back. I, I've taken a cross-section of a few of the different ones that appeared, so you can kind of get a feel for how this is run. So somebody will write in and they'll ask uh, what they're doing, or ask them to answer a question, or their input on something. And then usually, they'll get a response in the form of a comic panel that will somehow relate to what they said or what they asked. And each of these responses has a sexual undertone. That's the joke. Uh, this character molests other ponies. I mean, this is, again, it's a show intended for kids. So there really isn't a lot of sexual content in it, obviously. So the gimmick, the joke is, we'll make a sexual character that constantly alludes to molesting the other ponies and is sex-rattled and always thinking about it and kind of always works it into their answers. So how did it do? What was the response to this blog? Well, this is what they thought. You can see in this comic panel, it's a, a thank you. 30,000 plus followers. And that was three months ago. And if you look at a lot of the 
uh, different notes tagged onto these posts, you'll see that there are usually anywhere from 500 to 2,000. So it's getting a lot of traffic. People are liking it. It's adult humor. It's made to be a joke. I want you to think of other franchises that you saw when you were a kid. Think of Scooby-Doo. How many jokes and how many skits and videos and uh, image macros and comics are out there about Scooby-Doo getting high or Shaggy getting high or Velma getting fucked in the mystery machine? You take a child's program, you take something that's intended to be cookie cutter and clean, and you take adult concepts and you put it in, and that's the humor, that's the appeal. It's funny because Scooby-Doo and Shaggy and the rest of the, the gang and the mystery machine weren't really getting high and fucking all the time, but their mannerisms and characteristics made us think they were, and so when we show it, we get a laugh out of it. I'm guessing the same thing is happening here. So you've got this cookie cutter clean show about ponies that sing and dance and friendship, and you have a, a sex offender in their midst who is trying to fuck every one of them and has nothing but sex on their mind. That's the joke. So the community writes in, hey, what did you do here, or what did you do this, or what do you think of this? And every response is about fucking another pony. In the same way that those jokes about Scooby-Doo or any other child's franchise you can think of was done. Think of He-Man. How many gay jokes have you heard about He-Man? How many image macros are out there of He-Man getting fisted by man-at-arms? My god, if you watch Adult Swim, just Robot Chicken alone has made enough He-Man gay jokes to last us for a fucking century. So it seems like this blog is popular. It seems like the community is liking it. It's funny. You know, they, they get it. They like it. They're responding and interacting with it. What could go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Well, potentially, this is just a hypothetical situation, maybe a voice actor or somebody associated with the show or the production of the show happens to stumble on an image from the blog uh, and thinks it's funny but doesn't maybe necessarily get what it's about. And then they post it on their Twitter. And... Uh, all the people responding go, holy shit, wait a second. And then suddenly executives at Hasbro are freaking out because, again, you have to remember, corporations are not moral or immoral. They're amoral. They don't give a shit about what's right and wrong. They care about profit. So anything that could potentially damage their brand is something they don't like. And you could have a thousand executives in a boardroom who think something is the funniest thing on earth, but if it's going to hurt the bottom line, it's got to go. When you look at a lot of the... Uh, the work, especially in video games, of people who make their own uh, fan adaptations of popular franchises. This happens a lot with Nintendo in particular. They put all this work into it, they put all this effort into it, and they make something that's really fucking amazing. And they say, hey, we love this series, we love this franchise, we're not going to make any money off of it, but because we love it so much, we've made it, we're going to put it out there. What's the response they generally get? Take it down. And it's not because necessarily those companies don't like it. Hell, they may even think it's the greatest thing on earth but they're worried about the reaction and the impact upon the brand or the IP. That's how companies function. So in this hypothetical situation, Hasbro sees this image, and maybe they thought it was funny, maybe they didn't. But the bottom line is, this could fuck up our IP, this could impact our profits, this could lead to uh, potentially negative press. So we've got to send a cease and desist letter, or we've got to contact the blog owner and either put legal pressure on them or ask them, maybe outright, take it down. We can't, we can't have this. You can't put this up. It's not permissible. And lo and behold, it's, it's gone. It disappears. It gets pulled down because of legal pressure or something else. So what happened to our molestation blog? Because if you were to go look for it right now, it's not there. In fact, every image I've shown you, and this would really help to explain why they're so blurry and kind of out of focus, aside from my shit technical skills, is because I've got them off the Wayback Machine. The blog isn't there anymore. The Tumblr is gone. It has been annihilated. So everything you're seeing is just a screen cap that they got, but not necessarily the individual images themselves. So case or all, you think, right? Uh, the shit happens. So you're a brony and you found this funny and you're a little upset it's gone, but what are you going to do? Maybe you could make another parody site, maybe you could try it on a different website altogether, but for the most part, this one's gone. Hasbro has dropped the axe on it should be the end of the story. But of course, that's not where it stops. Why doesn't it stop there? Well, because of one particular individual. Because of April. Now, if you remember, I said that was a hypothetical situation. So what's the reality? What really happened to the blog? Well, to understand what happened to it, you first have to understand who April is. Now, she has a nickname online. Uh, I can't really remember. It's something like Pinky's Penis or Appendicitis Pony. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is, is that April was at the heart of this. So to know who she is, we got to take a look at her Tumblr and... Believe me, of course, a fucking course, she has to have a tumbler, a monument, an altar to her ego. 
it is the heart of vapid when you go to this tumbler. Now, if you have an aversion to pink and sparkly shit, I would recommend staying away from pinkypony.tumblr.com. Now, the first thing that greets you on the main page of her Tumblr, aside from an overwhelming sense of regret for having come here, is the horrible color scheme and the repeated pictures that she likes to post of herself posing with ponies. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that her Tumblr is segmented. It's organized with all the important things, like selfies and fashion and beauty and about me. So let's go take a look at the about me. Let's find out who April is. So let's read a little bit about her. Let's find out who she is. I'm Pinky. My favorite pony as a little girl was Pinkie Pie, and I wanted to be just like her. The nickname Pinky has stuck with me for a very long time. I love all things cute and pink and girly, as well as alternative edgy and punk rock. I am 17 years old. I've been a My Little Pony collector and equestrian since I was three years old. I live on sweets, internet, and my itty bitty horses. <laughs> Jesus. I like to make people laugh and smile, and I always love meeting new people. I love G3 MLP, especially G3 Pinkie Pie. I game too. I love Elder Scrolls Oblivion, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, Sims, Animal Crossing, and Pokemon. Okay, I think you get an idea of who this is. <laughs> I really hope you do. It's pretty obvious. I think my favorite part of that whole introduction is the I love things that are cute and frilly, but I also like it edgy. She covers the whole spectrum of bullshit in that one sentence. And if you were uh, a glutton for punishment and decided to go to her selfies portion, you'd be greeted by picture after picture after picture after picture of her making faces that border on autism spectrum in the mirror while holding up an iPhone. I like this one in particular, because on the right-hand side, it appears that the medicine has finally kicked in, and she just couldn't complete the collage. So I'm sure there were supposed to be like 10 pictures lined up there, but you know, she got a little sleepy and decided to cut it off there. Now, don't let all those selfies fool you. I don't want to give you the wrong idea. After all, April is a genius. As you can see here, she has an IQ of 142, despite the disability of being autistic. Bravo. I'm glad to see the autism hasn't slowed you down at all. In fact, it's helped contribute to some quality advice for all the young ladies out there. Like this one, for instance. Oh shit, I didn't take my birth control yesterday. I guess I'll have to double up and go super mega female power for today. That sounds like a genius idea. I'd expect somebody with an IQ of 142 to come up with that. I mean, it's just like using two condoms. It's double, double the protection. What could go wrong? Obviously, that's a smart idea. And she's very good with money as well, as you would expect of somebody with a genius IQ she's going to eventually become a millionaire. I mean, look at her fiscal responsibility. My mother gave me $40 for food and was surprised I went and spent it on toys. I've been her daughter for 17 years. Well, I've never heard of a better investment than that. Bravo, April. Again, showing what an IQ that high can accomplish. It's very impressive. She's also very civic-minded, like this particular post. The link provides all the information. Long story short, they don't include trans women in their program, and gender identity isn't their anti-discrimination statement. They have denied services to trans women and their past. That's her dumping a charity because it doesn't appeal to trans women. That is what I call taking a firm stance on an issue. Fuck charity. If they don't appeal to every single person, they're obviously bad. That's why I stopped donating to prostate cancer. Apparently, they didn't include women in that charity. How fucking sexist can you get? Now, maybe you've noticed a few things. One of those things happens to be social justice. That's right. Appendicitis Pony here is a big advocate of social justice. In fact, that's why she got involved in the Molestasia blog in the first place. She was part of a group called DWM. That's Down With Molestasia. And as you probably can guess from the name, they didn't like that blog very much. This is the Tumblr that was the headquarters, downwithmolestasia.tumblr.com, and in bright, really gaudy letters up there, it says, Ponies Against Rape Culture. You know, I like to play a game when I see a phrase like that. The first thing I like to do is make it an acronym. So what do we have? We have P-A-R-C. Now, let's take that acronym and make it an anagram. How could we, how could we change this around to, to really help highlight what this group is? Let's see, P-A-R-C. Well, let's, um... Let's switch the C and the P. What, is that, what does that give us? C-A-R-P. I don't think they're involved with fishing, so carp isn't really going to help us here. Maybe we could switch in another two letters to make it more, to make it clearer. I don't know. Let's see. How about, 
I, I know. How about the A and the R? What does that give us? C-R-A-P. Hmm. I think that might be more on point. After all, they are full of shit. I think, I think crap is a good anagrammed acronym for Ponies Against Rape Culture. So what was their stated mission goal? What was April doing with these people, and what was their, their general purpose? Well, it's right on the right-hand side there. Uh, this is the official blog for Down With Molestasia, Ponies Against Rape Culture. Our goal is to create a safer, more enjoyable place for My Little Pony fans. Unfortunately, rape jokes can be found anywhere bronies tread. Join the movement and take a stand against it. So what exactly was the stand that April and Crap took against rape culture? Well, that stand was against the Molestasia blog. Again, if you remember previously when I talked about a cease and desist letter from Hasbro, what would motivate them to send that? It's no secret, if you do a Google search, if you look at Google image searches, if you just browse around, you're going to find a fucking ton of horse-related porn. MLP has a ton of that shit out there. Fan fiction that's made for adults, pornographic images and flash games and videos. It is everywhere on the internet. So what would clue Hasbro in, particularly to this specific Tumblr? Someone would have to guide them. Someone would have to point them at it and repeatedly kick up a fuss about it to make it an issue. And who is kicking up that fuss? Appendicitis Pony. Little Miss April decides to do it. Now people have asked, why would you do a video on the Molestasia incident? Why would you care? You're not a brony. What does it matter? If you've watched the videos I've done, you should notice a theme throughout every single one of them. Whether it's the Hugbox videos or whether it's the Tumblrism videos. It is a specific type of person who does not care about the community they are a part of, but they only care about injecting their fucking ideology and their poisonous bullshit into anything they can. And April is that. She is a social justice warrior that wants to come in and make people behave in the way she wants. Now this group against rape culture, ponies against rape culture, their complaint was that the subject matter was terrible and it shouldn't be put up there. So I'm to take from that then that April has a problem with anything uh, that's adult themed and related to My Little Pony. Then could you explain to me how April, who sells art to make money on her Tumblr and on different websites, can produce content like this? Does this look family friendly to you? Her problem with the Ask Molestasia blog was that, oh my god, all these comic panels of sexually suggestive things, we need to take that down. Look at this. This isn't sexually suggestive. These are fucking ponies, April. And you're going to tell me this isn't uh, out of hand? This isn't the same thing you're telling me you're criticizing? These fucking hypocrites do this every goddamn time. It doesn't matter if it's atheism. It doesn't matter if it's video games. It does not matter to these people. They will shit up anything they can. They will kill entertainment. They'll kill political movements and drive a stake through things like uh, Occupy Wall Street. They don't give a shit. She is another self-entitled, white, middle-class, college-aged person who spews this bullshit and ruins fun for other people. Listen, I'm not a brony. I, I don't give a shit about the show. I don't care about the culture. But what bothers me about this entire incident, what bothers me about people like her and what they accomplished, is the simple fact that they want to be gatekeepers of humor. Is that the world you want to live in? Do you think that you're going to ever come across another George Carlin or Mel Brooks or Richard Pryor if people like this are the ones who get to judge what's funny and acceptable and what isn't? And that incident with people like Tosh.0 where he made a joke to an audience member that criticized him talking about rape and making fun of her. You remember the shitstorm around that and how hard it was for him to pull back from that? Look at the old Patrice O'Neill interviews on Fox News where he went in to defend Opie and Anthony and Jimmy and other comedians against somebody who wanted to moderate their humor and their comedy. These people cannot be allowed to do this. It's bad enough when it's religion or atheism or politics or entertainment, but if you let them get a foothold in comedy, you are fucked. Comedy is the one thing that lets us touch on subjects that are uncomfortable and that are not socially acceptable and still make fun of them and light of them and be able to move and cope and get on with our fucking lives. If you take away that mechanism for average people to have a fucking laugh, if you let pricks like this, who are hypocrites and money hungry and don't give a shit 
about the community they're a part of dictate to you and to others what is acceptable and not acceptable, you might as well just put a bullet through your fucking head. People have gotten on my case about hyperbole. Eh, see, I said it right that time. Uh, saying that, oh, you over-exaggerate. Of course, of course I use rhetoric. But can you not see the problem that's springing up all around us? When you read news stories about people suing employers for half a million dollar over proper pronouns, when you hear stories about universities and faculties at universities sending out letters saying, we are going to have meetings on diversity and multiculturalism, white people don't show up because you're not welcome because you have privilege. When we, you know, see stories about the Pentagon handing out manuals to people in the field that are supposed to teach soldiers about white privilege, people seem to think, that Tumblr and the people online are the source of this stuff. They're not. They are the end result. They are the end point of it. The source is something else entirely. What we're seeing now is it's springing up because it's propagated everywhere. And it's propagated and it spreads because people like this are indoctrinated into this bullshit. For me, this isn't an issue about bronies or stupid fucking rape jokes or a blog about a horse that molests other horses. For me, this is about a social justice warrior, the same type of person I cannot fucking stand, a special snowflake that thinks they have a right to take away somebody else's comedy or content or dictate what is acceptable speech or is not acceptable speech. It's the same thing every time. These people don't care about the groups they become a part of. They will infiltrate and become a member. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's political or sexual or religious, it doesn't fucking matter to them. They become a part of the group and then they subtly suggest their poison until it propagates and destroys. Imagine a virus injecting itself into a healthy cell and then spreading through the mechanism of the cell itself. That is what these people are. Special snowflakes are a pox upon any nation which allows them in and upon any group which will host them. Now you could watch my videos and you could say, I don't like what he says. He's abrasive. He uses language I don't like. He appears to be conservative, and I'm not. But at least we can have a conversation. These people will cut out any mechanism which allows us to communicate honestly and openly because they want to control the dialogue, control the words used, and control the ideas put forward until the only thing left is what they see as being all right and acceptable. Now we're going to see this play out. You're going to be able to watch this happen in real time. Now it happened to gaming, it happened to atheism, it happened in a few different places, but we've always seen the end result of it. Well, get ready because you can watch it grow in front of you. This, this shit with the bronies, the molestation blog, do you think that's the end of it? Do you think that's where they're going to stop? Case in point, this is a deviant art post. Somebody wrote a 27-page essay on sexism and the My Little Pony fandom. 27 fucking pages about a cartoon starring imaginary talking, singing, and dancing ponies. So in the end, I'm willing to set aside minor differences and uh, my judgmental views on bronies. Because what I see happening to them is the same fucking thing that happened to me as a gamer, and it's the same thing that's happened to a lot of other people. This poisonous shit ruins everything it fucking touches. Look at how much of a hypocrite this person is. You can't make jokes about rape. You can't talk about sexualized content relating to this intellectual property, this cartoon I like. But I can. You can't make money. You can't sell products. But I can. You can't say something because I find it offensive. But I can. This is who you want to dictate your morality and your sense of right and wrong? Is this obnoxious 17-year-old with a shitty tie-dye in her hair who doesn't have a fucking idea of what the real world is like? You know, one of the men I idolize is Franklin. You know why I like him so much? He came out with a list of virtues that he wanted to live by. But the key point, the thing that was most impressive, was that he didn't come out with a set of virtues for other people to live by. He came up with it for himself. He never thought to make other people abide by it. He thought it would make him a better person. These people could use a fucking dose of that instead of trying to constantly push their shit onto everybody else. Let them do a little introspection and see how rotten to the fucking core they are. Now, I know the video dragged on for a bit. I know it touched on a lot of subjects, but I wanted you to get an idea of what happened. We've got a group of goofy fuckers that like a stupid cartoon show. And these goofy fuckers that like their dumb little cartoon show made a fucking blog making some stupid fucking jokes. R does that really sound that horrible to you? 
You don't have some dumb fucking thing you like that you make jokes about? About games, about toys, about fucking television shows or movies? But the difference here is, these other assholes walk in and say, no, that's not acceptable. We're not going to let you do that. That crosses the line. That offends us. And your rights end where my feelings begin. Well, fuck her and fuck crap and fuck these people that think they can dictate to everybody else what is acceptable and not acceptable.